So welcome back to the garage. We are here for another cart build, but this time it's not for me. Apologies for the ducks quacking. You're gonna hear them as a constant presence because they live just behind this wall just here. Maybe we'll show you some proper duck footage later. But here's the star of the show. This is a 2014 OTK. It's an Alonso cart, an Alonso victory chassis. And I'm gonna try and build this up to GX UK standard for someone to race this year. And maybe it's gonna be you. We don't know who the new owner for this car is gonna be yet, but you're gonna see the entire build process. And I'm gonna try and show you in a little bit more detail than when I made the video of my car a few weeks ago. So let's get cracking, starting off with cleaning off a bunch of rust. Okay, so an initial axle shine up done. What we really need to do though is remove all the components. We need to take the sprocket carrier, the brake disc and um, brake disc carrier off. And really we need to get this all stripped down. But by sanding it down there and, and getting it shiny again, we've made our lives a little bit easier when it comes to getting those components off the axle. Next, we're gonna remove all the parts that shouldn't really be on here because we don't need them. Because it's not gonna be a Rotax Max car. So we can remove all these exhaust carriers down here. We don't need any of this. We'll put it all on the shelf. We're gonna strip all this stuff off, which is nice because it means I don't have to clean that. And then we'll start working on the rear axle, uh, taking off those components. So let's go. Quite an important thing when you're starting a project like this is to have all your tools and parts laid out. So I've got pretty much all the stuff I need here on the bench so that when I'm working on the car, I'm not having to look for too long to find all the bits I need. Right, whilst the axle is fixed in position, and I've done that with a bungee cord on the brake at the front here just to hold the brakes on whilst I'm working on the axle. Whilst it's in position, I'm gonna inboard the axle. Now what that means is we're moving the keyway from holding the sprocket carrier on the outside here to the inside of the bearing. And that means that we can actually put the sprocket and the chain on the correct side for GX UK. The way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get a piece of masking tape, I'm gonna put it over a real keyway pair of holes, make a mark, and then move that masking tape to the right area that I want the holes on the axle, then drill them in the correct size and hope that the keyway fits and I don't make a mess. So wish me luck. I'm gonna film this in real time this time because it might be too fast in time lapse. Putting some masking tape over these holes, which we know are correct and we're gonna scuff them up. So we can see the holes appear, there's a hole. There's another hole. Okay, masking tape is peeled off. We're then gonna move over to the place we actually want the hole, which I've already gauged is over here. Make sure we're as straight as possible. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't, but there are two holes marked here. I'm gonna draw them on so you can see. Pretty straight, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to punch those holes with a hole punch and a big mallet, which is this bad boy that I got for Christmas, the Thor dead blow from my brother Paul. And we're gonna make a hole punch with one of these things. We're gonna make a little hole in the middle so that the drill drills correctly. And there we go, voila, the keyway should fit, and it does. So now we just have to file this down flat, and then we have an inboarded axle ready for GX UK. Sweet. Old wheel versus new wheel.
So I have the floor out, that actually came out really well and I'm happy about this because this cart looks like it's been well maintained. It hasn't been used in a while and it needs some TLC right now, but the way this floor just dropped straight out and all the bolts came out pretty easily suggests to me that actually this has been well looked after. And the guys that I bought it from told me that it had always been looked after by a team and it had just been stored by them in their basement for quite a while. So I think it's not gonna take too much effort to get this back up and ready to race. All of the nuts and bolts that I removed from this cart are gonna be sitting for as long as possible in Sainsbury's nail polish remover to try and get all the gunk off of them. I pour it all into this little pot here. It's also what I use to remove sticky stuff from the bodywork when we get to that phase. There we go. We'll let them marinate in there and uh, when we come back to them in a couple of weeks, they'll be nice and clean or a lot cleaner. Right, there's plenty to do, but let's get back onto the rear axle because we need to get that off and cleaned and sorted before we can really move on to anything else. Here we go. Okay, so now we've removed all the junk off the rear end that we don't actually want. So all of the Rotax exhaust brackets. Next, I'm gonna undo the axle with these grub screws. There's three on each side, and we're then gonna knock the axle through. So it's fully out, we can give it a proper clean then, get rid of all of the rust, make it all nice and shiny, and then we can start working on the bearings and the brake disc and all that kind of thing. For anyone interested, that was 400 grit sandpaper I was using on the rear axle there. And I think you'll agree, it's come up a lot nicer than it was before. Still a bit more shining to do, but I think we can probably spray that with some WD-40 or GT-85 and leave it until we put it back in at the end. So let's get that out and then let's start working on the bearings and the brake disc and caliper. Okay, with the axle removed, we're now onto these reasonably dirty bearing carriers. This is pretty normal. If you don't keep on top of this after each race, it gets very dirty here because it's hard to access. We're gonna clean this all up, make it look new. We'll remove this, we'll remove this one. Obviously the tricky thing here is that the left side bearing carrier also is where the caliper attaches. But this one needs to come off anyway. We need to clean up this brake disc because it doesn't look very pretty. That's gonna go back on shiny and we need to check the insides of the caliper to make sure we don't have sticking pads because we do not want that. So next thing, off we go. So you've seen what we've just done with these, uh, the bearing carrier is, I'm not replacing the bearings. These are not worn out. They run very freely. There's not very much play at all. And I've just completely cleaned and lubricated them. So let's um, go to the next one and then we'll crack on with the brake disc. I want to show you what I'm doing here. So it's difficult to tell, but you can certainly see this section here, the little slider pin in the brakes is manky. That is gonna go. We are not accepting that level of corrosion and dirt, but the grub screw in the middle here that you need to remove to take it off has rounded. There's no way to remove it. So I'm gonna remove the nut and bolt from the end. There's a, a nut on the end here, Allen key on the other side. We're gonna re remove it as much as we can, and then we're gonna saw through the middle of this with a sharp hacksaw. That's how we're gonna get through. Then we'll replace the whole pin, make it nice. Nice again. So after a lot of sawing, we've got this little bolt cut. 
My cat is moving the camera. Catherine, can you leave? Can you stop knocking the tripod? Go then. Go that way. You've been fed. Yeah, and you're meowing. Right, anyway. Yeah, that's cut. I need to do it again because you have to cut either side of the central grub screw thing. But very, very cheap to replace. I'll have a fresh one of these in soon. Annoyingly, as suspected, one of the magnets is broken. You see there, we're, we're missing a lot of this magnet. So I think I've got spares. The one on this side, it's not in brand new condition, but I can clean that up and, and it is functional. It's not broken, but the one on the left is definitely in pieces. Only one third of it left. Luckily, the screw's not bent. So we'll clean all this up, remove that, see if we've got a spare magnet, get these brakes up and working again, and then uh, we'll finally remove this last bearing carrier. So in case you were wondering what I was talking about, this is the magnet. Shouldn't look like that. This is to pull the pads off the disc. Luckily, I've got some spares and some spare screws, and they should look a lot more like this. Obviously, one of them, not two. There's two here together. That's how it's supposed to look. That's how it actually looked. So no wonder the pads were sticking when I um, spun this axle around. So I'm actually going to replace both of these magnets just to be safe. No point having to do it again later in the season or causing the new owner of this car any problems. I'll just order some new ones of these for my car. So let's get this done and hopefully there's no more problems with these brakes. So that is now a functioning brake caliper. The pin is fresh. The pads are absolutely fine. I haven't changed them because they're official OTK red pads and they've got loads and loads of life left. They'll probably last two years at least. The pistons slide in and out really easily. Everything's clean. We are now gonna release this, remove it so we can get the bearing carrier off. But that is one big task out of the way. To finish off the brakes though, we need to renovate the brake disc, which is over here, looking a little bit sorry for itself on the desk. So we'll get to this shortly, because that needs cleaning up. Coming up soon. Rear axle assembly is all back together. All I now need to do is uh, tighten up some bolts, put some grub screws in. But just look at this. Look at how well this spins, how shiny it looks. Here we go. It is awesome. Really happy with that. Brakes work, everything works. Stage one complete. So I've just got home from work and I realized that I had some cool stickers on the wall up here that I could actually put on this fuel tank and make it look a whole lot nicer. So I'm gonna stick these on. This is gonna give you a little bit of a hint as to the color scheme that this car is gonna end up with. Let's do it. So as you probably just saw there, the fuel tank was jammed in because this bolt here is spinning round, or the, the little, the captive nut is spinning round when you turn the bolt. So I had to cut that off to get it out. It's now filthy, the cart is filthy. Loads of cleaning to do, gotta try and get this bolt out of here so that this fuel tank isn't completely destroyed. Wish me luck. So 
So it's a new week and I've got a load of work to do on the cart and we've had some toys arrive, some nice things that we're gonna need to build some more of this cart. Um, we've got some internals for the fuel tank. Um, we've got a tool for the bumper, which if you haven't had one of these before, this thing is really, really good for getting the rear bumper off and on, um, and also for, on the other end here, adjusting the camber caster, which we're gonna do as well later today. Uh, we've also got bumper rubbers to go inside the rear bumper, and we can mount the seat, because we've got a seat mounting kit too. So we're gonna get on with all those things. We're gonna start off by finishing the rear end. As you can see, it's a bit bumperless at the moment. Let's get this bit finished. Since the axle's working nicely, the brakes are all working, bumper's the final thing on the back, then we can move to seat. We're kind of doing this back to front this time. We're working from the rear of the cart forward, but you're gonna see that in this video. Let's go. currently doing is fitting the seat here. Um, it has to be spaced correctly. There's a couple of things you need to do. First of all, obviously, you can't just have a bolt sticking out with nothing in between that and the frame when you're looking under the seat at the front. So you need these little spaces, these little nylon spaces, and uh, you probably build up a couple of them and the bolt goes through the middle. But you also need to protect these sections. You can't have the seat stay with no protection behind it in a way that means it could puncture through the seat and stab the driver effectively in a big crash. So this isn't good. You need something like this, a big plate that goes in between the seat and the seat stay and that then protects the driver. We've got another one here, got a couple. I just found another plastic one. I'm going to use on the other side too. So anything like this, like a, a plastic one, this one's by Tillet, or just a piece of metal, the same. Just so that you've got a wider area in between the frame and the seat and it doesn't stab through. That's what we're going to do next. Okay, now we're gonna focus on the front end a little bit. Um, I'd like to get the steering column in the right position and I'd like to start building up the front bars and get the heel rest in position, get the pedals set in a roughly correct position and start really cracking on and making this look like a go-kart. camber and caster pills on. We're just putting together the stub axles and we found that the bearing on the other side is a little bit loose. So I'll show you, or rather I should say worn out. So I've just ordered some new bearings to go inside the stub axle here because as you can see, or maybe not, probably can't tell. There's a little tiny bit of play here. Oh, it doesn't really show up on the video. You can certainly feel it. See if you can hear it. No, you hear some other stuff. Basically, when you move there, you can see a little bit of a wiggle here. Anyway, I can feel it. I want this to be perfect. So we've got two new bearings to go inside here and on the other side, so that the new owner of this car will have fresh steering bearings. They won't have any play, because we don't want play in the steering. So something I've discovered while bolting the front end together, and now that we do have the front bars on, everything cleaned, look at this crack in the strut brace. So we'll be onto eBay shortly, we'll be getting a new one of those. That 
that's looking better. Steering wheel and seat and a bumper. That's a lot better. Okay, we are definitely getting there. You can see we've got a car that is kind of taking shape. We've got the hubs on, the rear axles done, we've got a rear bumper, there's a seat, side pods, an entire steering system which actually works, although I haven't done the tracking yet. We've got all the camber caster pills in. We know we're going to change the bearing in the stub axle because of that little tiny bit of up and down movement there, because of one of these bearings. Front ends on, Nassau panels on, everything works and spins nicely we just need to get the front bumper on which is over there somewhere and then uh, we'll do the floor we need to strip some stickers off the floor put a nice shiny fresh silver floor in but maybe that's for another day <laughs> 